Yeah, welcome. Are you ready, Marion, first of all? Marion, can you hear us? Uh, sorry? Okay, good. Uh, we're just getting started now. So um, just before we start, I welcome everyone to, I think it's the fourth um, talk now in our variational analysis and optimization webinar. Um, so just so that you know, this talk will be recorded. So I think you've already accepted that if you're still here, but this, this will be recorded and then posted online afterwards. Um, the rules are, please write your questions in the chat and we will moderate the questions at the end. So we'll wait till the end for questions. Uh, keep your microphones muted uh, during the talk, please. Um, if you ask a question, it's not always easy to hear people over a microphone over the internet. So just remember to speak slowly and clearly. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's my pleasure to introduce Marion Fabian, who will give the talk today. Uh, he's uh, the Director of Research at the Mathematical Institute of uh, the Czech Academy of Sciences in Prague. And he's an expert in variational and functional analysis, um, Benach space theory, regularity of mappings. And um, I also sat a course once with him on um, to do with separable, separable reductions at uh, Spring School in Pesecki. So, um, yeah, very happy to have him as speaker today in our webinar, uh, where he will tell us if you can uh, derive Hochschild's open mapping theorem from Clark's inverse mapping theorem. So, Marion, thank you. Thank you, Matthew, for nice introduction. Let me greet everybody, oh, in particular those in Australia. So, good evening, or also in fast. East, far, far East, like China, Vietnam, and so on. Then, good morning to people in Europe, and perhaps good night to some uh, Americans who are vigilant before their screens. Uh, how to uh, shift? Page down, does that work? Small, ah, this, is, this one, ah, enter, perfect. So, Prague, Ballarat, I just put uh, yesterday's date here, so sorry for first mistake in my lecture. And uh, I think that it would be fair to present my co-author, David Bartle. And maybe you know famous Bartle Graves theorem. So uh, my uh, co-author has nothing to do with this theorem, actually. The theorem appeared more than half a year later, uh, earlier, so it is impossible. But coincidence of names. Uh, so I start with a trip to the 19th century statement. You have a map from Rn to Rn, which is C1 smooth. And uh, we know that at the origin, the Jacobian uh, has full rank N. And then <sighs> F restricted to a suitable neighborhood of zero is a homeomorphism and moreover C1 morphism that is the inverse not only exists but is c1 smooth so this was proved i do not know by whom maybe in mid 19th in middle of the 19th century i guess people like leibniz or weierstrass or so and the proof can be found in every textbook from analysis and there are many different proofs nowadays approaches through functional analysis are quite short, but still not trivial. And now let us change uh, this uh, target space by R to the M, where M is less than N. So then uh, the situation works like this. Just the only change is that the target space is different and uh, I uh, changed f by g and again Jacobian, Jacobian if you like, but I think that Jacobian is better, uh, more correct, has full rank m 
and then get G has a C one smooth, now only right inverse in the vicinity. How to get statement two from statement one? Here is the uh, method. Find a matrix which somehow complements uh, the Jacobian and uh, nabla G this way, and then uh, uh, this matrix is square one and has full rank n. This is an easy exercise from linear algebra that such a B exists. And then I define uh, a new function mapping F. So if original mapping was G, then a new function map will be extension of G by these N minus M uh, entries. And this way F goes from RN to the RN. And uh, everybody can see that the Jacobian is equal to this augmented matrix, and hence it has full rank. Now, by statement one, which goes from Rn into Rn, we can find some uh, uh, C1 homeomorphism H, so that blah, blah, blah. And finally, defining phi this way, with some extra zeros here, uh, we get that phi is a right inverse to f, and we are done. So everything is standard. I just wanted to warm up and to recall how to get statement two, two from statement one. Yet there exists another method how to do this. So maybe small picture, big picture. So far, we had matrix like this, and this was nabla uh, G. And uh, by our method, we extended this rectangular uh, Jacobian to this one, and this was then nabla F0, and we applied statement one. Yet there exists another uh, way how to do it. So again, start from Jacobian nabla G0, and instead of augment, augmented it, we can shrink or rather restrict this rectangle to a square say something like this yeah. and if we are lucky enough then the orange square matrix will have a rank m and we can again apply statement one and somehow finalize the argument so it is done here consider injection i from r M to Rn, and then put F as the composition of G and I. Then a Jacobian, oh, here is a mistake, partial is missing here. Jacobian of F is a score matrix and is of full rank, as I said, if we are happy, because there exist many ways how I can choose orange uh, square. But according to some theory from linear algebra, which is in round brackets, this is always possible. Whenever I have a rectangle uh, matrix M cross R N, M less than N, which is of full rank M, then uh, there does exist a orange square M cross M, consisting of linearly independent uh, columns. And this is a situation uh, which is considered in statement one, mapping in between two spaces of the same dimension. And we can apply. And somehow we can 
and finalize everything. So now, my F goes from AM into AM, and then the inverse does exist, and finally composing the inverse F to the minus one, uh, by the injection I, we get a right inverse to the original mapping G. G uh, went from A N into A N. Okay, so everything is somehow standard and this is rather an exercise, nice exercise. And now what happened then? Uh, uh, in the early 70s, I was already alive, I remember, somebody brought uh, interesting news to our seminar at Charles University, there appeared the concept of generalization of Jacobian in a sense of Clark made by Frank Clark, by the way. So he is the definition, probably everybody knows it from Varisha analysis. So I will not repeat what is written in the slide. And uh, uh, oh, this, this is the, the end, yeah? So this is the definition. And uh, after this appeared, then uh, Clark himself published a paper about uh, inverse mappings. But first, here is a delicate, uh, uh, tiny moment about the derivatives. So, a raison d'etre for the existence of, of for, for the definition of Clark Jacobian is Rademacher celebrated theorem 100 years old that every Lipschitz, Lipschitz function is almost everywhere different. And if you have three functions, then you know intersection of or union of almost uh, negligible sets is again negligible. So everything is fine. So without this uh, fact, uh, Clark Jacobian would not have any sense. Fine. And uh, you can see and find everything in Frank Clark's monograph for details published in 83 or so. Now, let me repeat an analogous process from uh, what I already presented. So Clark proved the following. Instead of C1 fu function, he has Lipschitzian function and uh, requires that the Clark Jacobian has full rank and then there exists a Lipschitzian inverse for the mapping F. And one year later, Purcio, a Canadian mathematician, extending Clark for mappings from A and into A M, where M is less than N. And it should be noted that the proof was, uh, he actually provided two proofs in his paper. They were completely different from the ideas of Clark. Okay. So here is uh, the conclusion of Purcio. Instead of existence of in inverse, Clark, uh, Purcio has just right inverse, of course. Yeah. And uh, I didn't put here that, uh, no, 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 that's it. We do not know anything about phi, not even if it is continuous, just right inverse. That is that G maps the neighborhood of the origin here onto a neighborhood of the origin in RM. So this is old story. And since these two papers appeared, there uh, exists quite natural questions if it is not possible to squeeze Purcio theorem from Clark in a way I already presented for C1 smooth mappings. So this is so natural question that every other 
could get such an idea. I was one of them. So I was, um, how to say, thinking in my heart about such a possibility to uh, derive Purcio from Clark somehow in an elegant algebraic, algebraic way. So now uh, le let me present how, how to do this. Uh, we need a statement from linear algebra. So script A is a, a convex, convex compact set in the world of matrices with M rows and N columns and each element of script A has full rank. Then there exists a very specific matrix B of size N minus M cross N of full rank so that if I put B uh, down uh, here for every A then this augmented matrix has full rank N. You know if script A is a singleton, this is a simple exercise from linear algebra. I already mentioned it. But here we do not have a singleton. We have, I call it potato, patata in Spanish, convex compact body. This is <laughs> a bit different from just singleton. And this lemma says that such a matrix B exists. Once I have it, then I can imitate the first method, what I already presented, that is the method of augmenting. Uh, here I should have now uh, partial, that is uh, Clark Jacobian augmenting to uh, this and this part, this green part should be my B. That is for every element matrix A from here, we have one fixed B. So moreover, we have another uh, statement uh, which is good for the second derivation of Pulsio from Clark. And this, this corresponds to this orange approach. That is, there exists a very specific linear subspace uh, in Rn. Sometimes I uh, coincide uh, this guy with uh, just Rn. And always, this means what a family of space of column vectors of length n. Okay. Uh, and what do I say here that there exists a specific W with dimension m so that if we take any element of the potato A, then A restricted to W is a mapping from W into Rm, and this guy is subjective. So once I have this, then we can, we are pretty armed to prove Purcio from Clark in two ways, either green way or orange way. Here are some details. So uh, using this I corresponds to green approach. And this is here. And uh, uh, using uh, the orange way, I did not go into details. Maybe there are some small pitfalls, but it is possible to overcome it, them. So it is possible to get a statement, uh, sorry, to get Purcio from Clark. Fine. So now I could stop my lecture, but I promised to speak at least one hour to Professor Sasha Kruger. So let me continue a bit. Because this is not the end of 
the story. Cooling down. We had troubles to prove theorem three, this one, uh, in full generality. And then, you know, if you have such a, a lemma, uh, uh, valid under some extra condition, this is not so, so good. So we had troubles with this, and it took us half a year or so with my colleague, David Bartle, uh, doing this until, uh, and because we had troubles with uh, general case M cross N, we restricted ourselves just to matrices with two rows and three columns. This is the first non-trivial case for our purpose, of course. And even here we had troubles. And after a longer effort, we gave up. So several times we almost produced a result at and the very end it somehow collapsed. So very unpleasant, unpleasant time in our life uh, one year ago. And found finally a counter example. So now you understand that why I did not stop my lecture and I should go on. So let us formulate the proposition. There does exist a potato script B consisting of matrices two by three with the following properties. Each matrix has full rank two. So this is what is required in both Clark and Pulsio theorems. First property, and second property, this is bad one. Uh, give me any three-dimensional vector V, then uh, the script B contains a very specific capital M matrix, such that if we put the vector V below M, then we get what? A matrix three by three, this guy is singular. Singular means that the rank is two. So it is even uh, uh, written this way, equivalently. Singularity of the matrix M V is the same as to say that V belongs to the linear hull hull of the rows of M. Yeah. Very bad and uh, surprising fact. And this is not all. So actually, uh, the second uh, statement uh, brings bad news for using the green method of squeezing Porcio from Clark. Moreover, we have another bad news that our potato script B has the property. Give me any plane, plywood, somebody would say, in the space 3R, then there exists a very specific element from script B such that the rank of the matrix on W is not two, what would you like to have, but just one. And this third property completely destroys what? The orange uh, approach, how to squeeze Purcio, Purcio from Clark. So again, I could stop my lecture here, but Still, maybe this is not a complete disaster because this potato double uh, script B so far has nothing to do with a possible Clark Jacobian of a fun, uh, mapping G. So there is no information if I have, actually, we did not know this time 
if you have some general convex compact uh, set in of matrices that if there exists a map G whose Clark Jacobian is exactly equal to B. So this is completely new and not algebraic question. And now variation analysis enters our, our lecture somehow. So, oh, I forgot. Probably you were somehow curious about how script B look like. So here is the description. It is the convex hull O4 carefully shows the matrices O, A, B, C. So you can gaze on them for a while and at home you can uh, try to make a picture or so. So this is, uh, and don't ask me how we got this, it took us a longer time, mm. and probably in the paper we are preparing now about this with David, we will write a paragraph about how, how we got it. So this was a result of many uh, attempts to prove positively uh, uh, opposite to proposition four without success, and then we found this. So this is the celebrated, maybe it will be one celebrated, uh, uh, very specific potato having such bad properties. Now, now uh, let us uh, switch to uh, Clark's uh, Jacobians. As I said, it is not clear if this tetrahedron, or how to say, uh, is equal to a Clark Jacobian of some G. So we, of course, raise this question and uh, uh, what happened? Aha, one uh, more detail that uh, how to prove first about the proof. To verify one or two amounts a lot of boring work sometimes facing to solve quadratic equations. So complicated, boring stuff, but we did uh, we, uh, need to perform separately, David separately, me separately, and several times to check if everything is okay, because it is very easy to get a, make a mistake and overlook something and uh, you know, these properties, one against two or against three, um, they go against each other, so it's quite delicate. And three, important, follows easily from two, actually three and two are equivalent each to other. And now Clark stuff comes. Uh, freezing. So we were thinking about how to name choose names for sections. So for us, freezing is something uh, worse than cooling down. Because this is a main question which uh, arose immediately after finding script B. Thus, there is a Lipschitzian map so that it's Clark Jacobian is equal to B. And uh, I do not know how much it was written or how many people did it uh, to study which uh, potatoes correspond to Clark Jacobians and which not. And we found some pitfalls and interesting phenomena there. Look, so we did not answer this question. So this is still open. However, we made a progress and we would, I do not know how to say, if good or bad news. <laughs> if we add one more matrix, we already have four, O, A, B, C, now some matrix B, then this extra matrix helps 
uh, in the following way. If we add to the convex hull P, so this guy is some pentagon is probably not the right word. Who knows? So, uh, because it is in the space and call it C, still possesses the properties from proposition four. Let me recall them. Each element has full rank. And this is, you know, quite dangerous. B contained matrices of rank two only. But if you add some randomly chosen P and extend B by this P, then it happened to us several times that for some P's, we lost this property. Some elements of the bigger body had rank one. And this is the end of the story. So, <laughs> but fortunately, this P doesn't have such a property. So this pre P doesn't damage the property of full rank two. And moreover, what? Uh, the property uh, second that give me a vector, then I find a matrix, so that blah, blah, blah. This is inherited from script B automatically. So fortunately, this is for free. So this is okay. And the third property concerning the ply wood W, that is two dimensional subspace. Again, I can take M, uh, not necessarily from big C, but from B. And I have the dimension of the range one. So this was trivial. But <laughs> problem was, as I said, with this square property. But so far, this is nothing very interesting. Uh, but this is not the end of uh, uh, the theorem. Moreover, this bigger body C works. That is, it corresponds to a very carefully chosen Lipschitzian map G from R3 into R2, so that is holes. Yeah. And uh, we spent several months first to find P, then to produce, uh, produce G. So this was not trivial. I will tell you some troubles about, about this. And uh, at the very end, I will uh, present another theorem which uh, uh, provides G like this and some one extra property, but later. I will tell you details. So, next slide. Continuous contact. In our journey of constructing suitable Lipschitzian maps, we discovered, or how to say, an interesting phenomenon, which is helping for constructing maps G. Uh, a continuous contact. I do not know if uh, you can perhaps read it. So the definition is, Give me two matrices, uh, MN, with uh, just two uh, rows and, say, seven uh, columns. For us, just three columns. Then we say that they have continuous contact. If the difference, you know, matrices are actually vectors, and we have operation plus minus, so why not to perform uh, minus M minus N, and then this is again matrix two by N, and we require that the rank diminishes by one. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, here it is not uh, written clearly, but if these two guys have full rank two, then here we require that M minus N is. Yeah. So this is the phenomenon or how to say, and as I said, uh, once we have continuous contact, then we can do not miracles, but we can do at least something. So observation, illustration how good contact, continuous contact is. If I have 
two matrices, okay, two, two by three, and have continuous contact, then I can define G by this alternative cases, and then it is easy to show that such a G has Clark, Jacobian, exactly equal just to the linear segment uh, with endpoints M and N. If I have some other couple M and without continuous contact, that is that the difference is two, this uh, operation, this construction doesn't work. So this is this is an obstacle. If I had matrices uh, two by one, then everything is somehow easier. But for these actual actually functions but for matrices, it is a problem. So what else is here? Aha, this is what I already tell you. So and now if you remember our potato had four and then five different matrices chosen very carefully somehow but this time we did not care at all about some continuous contact in between them we even did not know about necessity of such a uh, property uh, but i will tell you something secret p this additional the fifth matrix has a continuous contact with each from the cortege. Uh, Professor Alec Joffe likes this term in short, finite sequence, longer cortege. O, A, B, C. This is wonderful. And uh, he found it partially, uh, randomly, partially not. Maybe that David Barta will not agree with me. <laughs> Uh, so, but first we had P, and then we realized <coughs> that this continuous contactness is at hand. Picture. Oh, David Yost, welcome. <coughs> so he is again <coughs> reminding uh, what O A B C P look like, and uh, I put the extra matrix P in the middle. And uh, this means continuous contact. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, okay, continuous contact, continuous contact, continuous contact. Yeah. So at this moment, what I already presented, we are able to find mapping G such that its Clark Jacobian will be equal to the segment in between O and P, and another G whose Clark Jacobian is equal to the convex hull of C and P and so on. So just such a primitive diagram. But in uh, uh, we, we need to get G, which would somehow reflect all these five matrices. And for this, we found something which finally called Rayfish Lemata, ray or ray fish. So here you can read something about the shape of G promised in our theorem. So we first need to construct very carefully some single ray fish. Uh, maps and then then put countably many of them together somehow floating in the ocean and so on and so on. picture so these are realistic rays and uh, our ray fish will be simpler but imitating a bit this So first, we uh, because the situation with two by three matrices seemed to us too complicated, we preferred as a training 
to use just a, a situation of two by two matrices, and then we extend it to uh, one dimension up. So imagine all this is Ocean controlled by matrix P mapping, the, which sends X into PX. And then this is the origin. This is the unit circle. Here is uh, U. I forgot to tell you that U is chosen in such a way that it is perpendicular these two. Uh -huh. U is perpendicular to this line. And this line, this is not demonstrated here, is a contact line uh, realizing contact between matrix P and Q. So maybe I will, okay. And then actually, so you can think that P is just identical zero, and then you erect a bit uh, the origin and uh, complete such a roof. Okay, and the roofs are controlled by uh, slopes, and each slope is controlled by one matrix Q. So P Q were given, and we had to calculate this uh, ping also M S sub delta M a sub delta, all matrices two by two. And uh, here is minus delta u, and delta is say one millimeter, millimeter. And if you constructed this, then I will say that I have one ray fish map from R2 into R2. So mathematically, it looks like this. Give me two matrices with continuous contact. Actually, the continuous contact is used right on this line because it is, a, a, how to say, frontier margin of where P ends and Q starts. Another continuous contact between P and R, M, R delta will be this line and yet other this line is a continuous contact between P and M sub S delta. And these two points are just very close to these two up to one millimeter or so. So formally, the three two day ray fish uh, looks like this. Uh, uh, this R zero is in the, how to say, zero set of the difference. So the difference, because they have continuous contact, has dimension one. So this to the minus first is a line and intersection with the sphere is a double tone. So one point will be R zero, the other will be S zero minus R zero. And then you will be perpendicular to these two. So again, picture. These two guys, uh, uh, S0, R0, are parallel to this, to, to this, and uh, they lie in the uh, uh, continuous uh, line of continuous contact between Q and P, and U is perpendicular on them. So, uh, and then we construct uh, delta is one mill millimeter or so. Then we find this and this. And uh, here are formulas for the chosen, so matrices which are being chosen, chosen this one, this one, and some. Uh, uh, equalities uh, corresponds to uh, the co coincidence on the uh, in the place where uh, the uh, graph is broken. So here, 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 we have six such edges which should 
somehow think about carefully. And this is here written. And then the function will be defined uh, by four cases corresponding to, to three roofs. And the first will be the ocean, P. And uh, the properties of such a function will be that is P is by linear, OK? Lipschitzian, because it has derivatives. F is almost everywhere equal to just matrix P, Q, M, A, delta, or M, S, delta, nothing more. So wonderful Lipschitzian mapping. And uh, uh, such a mapping is everywhere differentiable. And finally, this is important, that the found matrices M A delta go to P, and similarly M S delta go to P, and the Lipschitz constant go to this, when delta goes to zero. So look again at the picture. If I have such a picture, and here delta is, say, one third, but if delta is one millimeter or one micron, then the height of the pyramid rayfish is pretty small. And these pink uh, roofs are approaching the ocean P, while Q is not. Q is always Q. And this is what we wanted to know. So I, fine. Here is a proof. Just uh, this is nice you know, to say work in linear algebra. We start from this equality, then because and this is a regular matrix. This is column, uh, column vector, column vector, and these two are almost perpendicular. So for sure, this matrix has uh, rank two, and we can perform inverse mapping. So applying the operation of inverse mapping, we get on the left side just M sub blah, blah, blah. And on the right side, we have the times the inverse Going with delta to zero, this guy goes to R zero, and here this part disappears. So here we will have this, and here we will have R zero. Look. And finally, because R zero was in the contact line in between Q and P, then Q R zero is equal to P R zero. So finally, we have this. Then some simple reasoning, uh, like how to work with uh, matrices. By the way, um, uh, multiplication of matrices obeys uh, associative law. And finally, this is nothing else than P. So we started with this, and we showed that it converges to P. So this is what I presented before, just manually on the picture. Fine, but this was just a training. And, and now a realistic uh, ray fish, which is in the dimension three. <sighs> so this is still some comments about the, the proof I presented. Now, having this, it was rather easy, but a bit complicated to present a, a three-dimensional rayfish where the domain will be three-dimensional and the graph of the rayfish will be four-dimensional. And instead of trying the angle I showed you, we, you will have a pyramid. Yeah? So such a, a two by three rayfish will be built, erected up on a pyramid. So here is <laughs> the description. Please uh, do not uh, pay much attention to it because this is boring. But you can see some similarity. Just we have here more. Everything is somehow extended. But instead of this, here is simplified three-day Rayfish lemma. Give me two matrices now from two to three. And give me delta say one millimeter, then the lemma guarantees the existence of three matrices. And here I have 
double uh, uh, how to say uh, two member subscript uh, in first ray fish we had he just m a delta and here we have a delta s delta s delta t delta t delta a delta matrices two by three such that they again converge to the ocean matrix p and blah 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 it is everywhere uh, differentiable and the Lipschitz constant is calculated somehow and blah 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 so which is uh, in the previous slide so and this is the uh, very brick and at the very bottom of our construction of the promise uh, map g picture Aha. maybe oh fine but for some reasons actually right now we have uh, enough material to construct g which will be a counter example for the green for the green approach of augmenting however as regards this orange method of restricting I do not have so much time to explain it. There are several pitfalls, and uh, it may happen that if we do not construct G uh, carefully enough, then it may happen that uh, such a G, uh, that Porcio theorem for such a G can be squeezed from Clark. So this is not strong counter example good it is enough as i said for green method but not for orange method and this is related to maybe i should write down it here such a formula maybe i should write down it here So W is as usual the plywood, the two-dimensional subspace, and the question is about such an inclusion, which looks very plausible. But uh, to be frank, I do not know how to prove it in generality. So it is necessary to do something in Clark's book. You cannot find this in Clark's book. There is something which is weaker. Yeah, but uh, actually, this was not pro problem for us because we somehow improved the construction of G, G is always from R3 into R2, so that even the orange uh, method of squeezing Purcio from Clark collapses. So, and for this we needed uh, such an object, we found it in the vocabulary called spherical shell. You have one, uh, sphere and bigger sphere and what is in between is called in English spherical shell and then we needed to uh, one more lemma and uh, we were thinking how to call it and uh, perhaps corona is quite uh, how to say topical current word and uh, actually imitates what we do so let we have again two matrices pq delta is as i said one millimeter then we have some matrices coming from a three-dimensional ray fish lemma then there exists a spherical shell and a lipschitzian map such that h is equal to the ocean p outside of the spherical shell and as regards the uh, differentiability it is always almost always differentiable differentials uh, consist of just p uh, five matrices p q m m m nothing more nothing else and as i said these three m's converge to p 
if delta goes to zero. So in a countable process, while delta is going to zero, we can neglect about this. And finally, what remains in Clark, Jacobian will be just these two times, P and Q. So what else uh, is promised in this corona lemma? This is one extra property, give me any, an enemy of mine provides an X. Then I am able to find a positive alpha, so that, that the multiple of X by alpha does belong to the spherical shell. And my map H is differentiable at this alpha X and the derivative is equal to Q. And uh, uh, this somehow is uh, used, I might hear some comment. Where is it? Fish. Ah. So then what we get will be, G will be a ray fish rich in every ray originating from D origin. <laughs> and this guarantees that finally my G will be so bad that what is on the blackboard, the orange method uh, also collapses. So how to prove this? Oh, here is what uh, is promised by Corona Lemma. And uh, here you can probably guess that these red triangles are the single ray fish which are floating in between some beta and gamma on the spherical sphere. So this is an illustration, uh, we call it Corona Lemma. The proof of Corona Lemma is just putting uh, some 50 cases of lemma seven, some topological uh, small troubles should be overcome. So as I said, every corona consists of maybe 100, 500 uh, ray fish, fish which have a mutually disjoint uh, domains. So this is the point. Fine. And now we are armed to for, uh, formulate uh, the final theorem. So theorem nine is improvement of the previous theorem. So it is enough to remember this one. We constructed G, which is Lipschitzian, whose Clark Jacobian consists of what we already spoke about a lot, the convex hull of the very carefully chosen matrices O, A, B, C, P. What else? Every matrix from the Jacobian has full rank two, which is what we needed. For every vector, there is a matrix in the Jacobian so that the square matrix is singular or equivalent formulations that V belongs to the linear whole of the uh, rows of M. And one more delicate property, which was not uh, seen before, give me, oh, coming from my enemy, a plywood, maybe that this is just X y plane or x z plane but actually any slant ply wood uh, sitting in the three-dimensional space then i have such a wonderful equality and actually we are concerned that about rather that how to say right is part of left. But so th we did not solve this problem, but uh, we did construct such a G where 
uh, everything is okay because on the right side this is nothing else than partial g at zero and all this restricted to w fine and why is this last property important because of this addendum that once i have this property and this is again i will uh, read repeat what i already said such a g is ray fish rich in every ray originating from the origin in every plywood yeah so very bad very bad g so what about the proof consider countably many diminishing coronas uh, mutually uh, disjoint converging to the origin where deltas go to zero of course so nothing extra you can uh, imagine it as you have a pond or a lake and drop off a stone and what happens then there appeared a concentric uh, circles and each circle corresponds to one corona so this is <laughs> very well proof and just to uh, sum up how to recover your memory conclusion by Purcio theorem the Lipschitzian mapping from theorem 9 admits a rise inverse in the vicinity of zero yet this fact could not be obtained using Clark's theorem by augmenting green method. This one. Okay, this is first, first bad news. And the second bad news, neither theorem one, that is Clark, is helpful if we restrict our G to some plane, two-dimensional plane, because then the restricted G sub W maps two dimensional space W into uh, R2. But we know that there is L, so that the range is one. So this is uh, bad for application, for applying Clark theorem in this situation. Oh, here is a more particular case so w is a x y plane and then our theorem 9 uh, promises the existence of m so that uh, this vector uh, this uh, perpendicular up reaching up vertical uh, lies in uh, the linear combination of the rows of m and uh, L defined this way work, and then the dimension is, is one. Yeah, I think this is, oh, yeah. The very end of my, our effort. As you can see, no more <laughs> how to say references. Actually, I, I had a look in Google and uh, put the name Porcio and I found some 20 references, but uh, all the papers were, how to say, dealing some uh, rather, how to say, or more general or rather marginal question, but nothing like what I presented here. So we do believe that what I presented is original and perhaps new and has a flavor of novelty thank you very much to you all around the world for your patience thank you very much for your talk marion uh for the really nice talk um does anybody have any questions for marion maybe i will just start off one question then you said that um maybe in the paper you will write a paragraph about how you discovered the, these four matrices, O, A, B, and C. Can you give us some short explanation or some idea of, of how this is done now? 
uh, about the body uh, B, right? Yes. Yeah. So difficult. As I said, so maybe we, I are, we are thinking to uh, put, uh, say, explanation uh, one page long about this. Right now, I can tell you at least something. So uh, let, let me go back to the picture. Yeah, so, but this is the most <laughs> interesting, most uh, uh, attractive question. So, uh, assume that <coughs> this uh, uh, is denoted as O1, O2, this A1, A2, P1, P2, okay? Then, the idea behind the choice of the vertices O, A, B, C, of the tetrahedron script B, is that the normal vectors to the rows of the matrices A, B, C, and usually if I have uh, two vectors, doctor, doctor, say, mm. maybe I will write down in here, so A is A1, A2, then a normal vector to the uh, uh, rows can be calculated this way. So this is the so-called tensor product. So we perform tensor products A1, A2, then B1, B2, C1, C2, and these two should lie in the plane X, Y. So if you can at home sit down and try to, to, to draw a suitable picture. So this is one moment, this perpendicularity of, so this should lie, I will, lie in the plan, yeah. So this should lie in A squared cross zero, X, Y plane, and the same, B2, B1 cross B2 and C1 cross C2. And as regards the fourth, uh, first matrix O, this is different uh, the normal vector of the O is tensor product uh, is perpendicular to this plane. So, to say, <laughs> I do not know how much you can see it. Maybe. B1, B2, C1, C2, and uh, O1 tensor. O2 should be perpendicular to uh, uh, this plane. A uh, uh, second cross zero. So this is, of course, not explanation <laughs> why it uh, works, but just such an idea about uh, how uh, the rows are distributed in the three-dimensional space or so. But we promise, we, we plan to, to write more, more information. So, so that's it, what I can say. Or maybe, maybe David could, uh, could uh, uh, say more, David? Yes, yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, I think, yes, you, you are quite right. Yes, the idea was that I think I could share my screen. Ah, I cannot. Uh, yes, the main idea was, uh, as you said, to look for the normal vectors of the matrices A, B, C to lie in the one plane. Such, such that the origin, the zero vector, is in the interior of the oh, convex interior, I forgot to. Yes. 
Yes, so they, the normal vectors form a triangle in the plane and the origin being inside and the normal vector to the matrix O is perpendicular to the plane. And how we found it? Yes, uh, well, simply when trying to prove the lemma positively, we tried, we did many efforts, yeah? we did a lot of tries, and there still some remained some cases we couldn't prove it fully, and somehow it, it crystallized, yes, that this is the case, uh, this was the example when our efforts failed, yes, when uh, we which we could not prove for this case, and this is the way how we found it. <laughs> Perhaps so this could be the explanation. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it took some, there was some effort. Behind, yeah. Okay, yeah, thanks, thanks a lot for the explanation. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's <laughs> difficult to explain. <laughs> yeah. Does there anybody, some... sorry, uh, does anybody else have a question then for, for Marian or for David? Yeah, perhaps, okay, so then perhaps I like... could perhaps I could explain Marianne, please, if you could uh, show the Corona lemma, I would just to note just the note, just a remark, yes, that the matrix P, which was in the lemmas, is the matrix P, which you could see in the center of this of the diagram, which Marianne showed, and the matrix Q is intended to stand for the matrix O, A, B, C. Yes, you apply this lemma repetitively for these four matrices. Yes, I for, forgot to say this. Times, yes. And this is used as an auxiliary construction in the mat mapping G. Yeah. So this is the end of my remark. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, then, yeah, thanks again uh, for the, the nice talk today, Marion. Thanks also for the explanations, David. Uh, next week, Hua will give a, a talk on uh, zero duality gap with uh, abstract convexity. So join us next week, same time for, for another talk. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. So thank you for Bye. listening to me.